Goofy the Simba from the YouTube chat has a question. Please teach me how to do the tap to change eyelashes and makeup. Tap to change eyelashes and makeup. Mm -hmm. All right. I think Let's... we can use interactions. Oh, August, did you have a project that you wanted to show off? Maybe a little bit. It actually has makeup in it. So maybe oh, I can use, modify this project. Let's take a look. So here is the blushing effect. It's a little easier to see with a face, a close face uh, that is emoting a bit. <laughs> Let's take a look at the eyebrow raised. You can see when she raises her eyebrows, the blush fades in and then it fades out. You know, when I was working on this, I, I noticed there's no way to check if the eyebrows are actually raised. You can check if they're wiggled. So I made this little subgraph and if anybody else Think finds this useful, I can share it afterwards, but it's basically using face avatar result to check if the brows are up by a certain amount. This is a fudge value. It's usually called in the technical world where you're just like choosing a value. You're just like, okay, I think 0.2 is the best value for this. So you can kind of adjust those, but this is a way to check this. If the eyebrow is raised, even though there's not really uh, the facial movement node doesn't have it. So yeah, if you, if you find this useful, I'll share this later. Uh, it's pretty. And then, uh, to switch through the makeups, if we wanted to, this is the easiest way to switch through with them. When you tap, we've got scene object here, and I, this is my own personal project. So I didn't like make it like a template where everything's named nicely. I was just a Saturday project, you know? <laughs> Uh, but scene object just holds all of these different makeups so that I can easily turn it off and on when you tap the screen so that males and female users or masculine and feminine, feminine users could use it. Um, but if you want, you can just click on this scene object that holds all of your stuff and you can say interaction. Let's see. Uh, cycle children visibility on tap might be what you want. And if you're doing it in your, uh, depending on the organization of your makeup, it might be that you have this top level holder and then you have like sub holders that hold your different sets of makeup instead of the different parts. And then it'll turn off and on each set of makeup rather than each piece of one makeup, one makeup set. So then this is all it looks like once you add that interaction. And if you want to learn more, you can always uh, tap into these subgraphs that are automatically generated by this plus add interaction button. And you can see that it's taking this scene object and it's got these uh, cycle through mode things and it's taking the touch input. This is probably just the touch node. Yeah. Tucked into a subgraph uh, for reasons. And then if you take a look here, well, you know, you, you could really, you could probably tidy it up a bit, but for the most part, it's uh, just cycling through and turning everything off and then turning one on at a time to make sure that only one of these objects is on every time you tap. So that could be very useful because you don't have to, you don't have to understand any of this. You don't ever have to look in here. You can just click that add interaction and find the tap cycle, tap to cycle children visibility. And this does everything for you. That is perfect. Thank you.